welcome to Competency 16, Part 2. Number 5. What is the probability of tossing two coins with both landing on tails? We've listed possibilities of this toss. So tails and tails, tails, heads, heads, tails, heads, and heads. Well, we can see that this is actually going to be one fourth. Mathematically, that will be one, one coin tossed with a probability of a half. But as we see, we have another toss. So we have two probabilities multiplied together. That's an outcome of a half times a half, which is one fourth. We can also see that on our calculator. We could just say 0.5 square, and that gives us 1 fourth. We need to push math, and 1 is for fractions, to convert it to a fraction, which is what we need. Then we push enter to get out, and enter to get our final answer. Number 6, what is the probability of rolling the number cube once with the cube landing on a number greater than 2. Rather, that would be p probability with n greater than 2. Okay, let's write this down. We know we have, oh, sorry, we're using a, it doesn't say we're changing, it looks like standard number cube, so that's 6. Okay, let's see, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that's 4. Yes, we could easily, or some of you could easily see what that reduces to or simplifies to. But we'll go ahead and put that in our calculator. And it gives us a decimal. I see two thirds, but if you don't always recognize these decimals, you can use your math option. It's already highlighted on fraction conversion. Press once to get out, once for your answer. Yes, two thirds. Okay. Number five, a five-sided figure is numbered one to five on each of its faces. If the number is rolled twice, what is the probability of rolling an odd number on the first roll and an even number on the second roll? Okay, I know that I'm going to multiply. I see the word and, and my first roll, oh, excuse me, my first roll needs odd. And my second roll needs even. Well, I'll write that down and we're just going to put that in the calculator. Okay, and we have five outcomes each time. Odd. One, three, and five. Three odd numbers. But there's only two and four because we're only going to go up to five outcomes. So let's put that in the calculator in parentheses so we can see this. Okay, so we have 3 divided by 5. Close your parentheses, new parentheses. 2 divided by 5. Closing parentheses, enter. Well, that gives us a nice clean decimal. Well, let's put that in a fraction. Say math. Enter, enter. Ooh, 6 out of 25. Which we could see pretty easily. We're just multiplying straight across, and we see that, that the numerator and the denominator have no values in common. So we have 0 0.24. Okay. Number 8. What is the probability of tossing three coins with all coins landing on tails or all coins landing on heads. Now, that is going to be different from the other questions in the respect that we have or. So we have two, we really have two events. Every time we toss the three coins at once, that's one event. And the word or tells me 
we're going to add these events together. So we have, quickly, let's see, three coins. That means three, three outcomes in each coin. Ooh, pardon me. Let me change that. It should be. Each coin has a probability of a half. However, we have three coins. So that's really going to be to the third power. And then the next option, okay, is one, I keep doing that, one half, and again, three coins. What you need to realize is that on the first option, we're discussing pails. And on the second event, rather, we're considering heads. They have the same probability and each time there's three three coins. Let's put that in the calculator as is. Okay. And let's use 0.5 instead of half. You know, I take that back. Let's arrow back, delete that out. One divided by two. And we're going to go ahead and close the parentheses. Carrot up, third power, you have to arrow over. Don't forget to arrow over. Add parentheses, one divided by two, close parentheses, carrot up, third power. There's my two events. I'm going to add together, enter. Ooh, that is one fourth. And let's show that again as a fraction. Okay. All right. Yes. And mathematically, what is it? What are we really doing? Well, the first event is 1 over 8. Then you have the second event is 1 over 8. However, when we add those, we get 2 out of 8 which is one out of four or one fourth. Number nine, what is the probability of tossing a coin four times and landing on tails all four times? Okay, we're talking about four different events. So each event has a probability of one, Excuse me, one out of two, one half. Okay, and we have four separate events and landing on tails. Well, because one side's tails or heads, just as before, and how we've discussed in the other videos, we're talking about four different events. Let's pop that in our calculator real quick. I'm going to use my parentheses. 1 divided by 2, close my parentheses, carrot up, 4, enter. That looks like a familiar decimal, but let's convert that to a fraction. Math, enter, enter. Yes, and that is 1, 6, T which is also equal to 0 0.0625. Number 10, an ordinary number cube is rolled twice. What is the probability that the sum of the two rolls is equal to four? Okay, we only have three possibilities. If we rolled a one the first time, and a three the second time, that would give us four. If we roll the three the first time, one the second time, that would give us four. And of course, two either time, that would give us four. So this is a total of three. So we have a probability. Mm, 
ordinary that's what I was looking for ordinary number cube so we have one roll at six we have another roll at six twice we're rolling it twice so we're gonna have outcomes multiplied together but only three total possibilities because we're talking about the events being combined together okay so obviously that's three out of 36 can that be simplified of course it can be simplified but I'm not going to do that by hand and I say math enter enter 1 12th Okay, let's go down to number 11. Let's see. Scoot up so we can see the entire question. What is the probability of rolling a number cube once with a cube landing on an even number on the first roll and a number greater than four on the second roll? Okay, and we were talking about, looks like an ordinary number cube. They don't say it, but we can assume that. So, down the first row, even number. Two, four, six. There are three. We have the word and. We're going to multiply. And on the second row, we still have the same denominator. A number greater than four. Well, that's five, six. That's two. Okay. I'm going to enter that in the calculator as is. Parenthesis, 3, divided by 6, close parentheses, new parentheses, and 2, divided by 6, close parentheses, enter, and I get a very familiar decimal, but we want a fraction, actually. Okay, so math, enter, enter, 1 6th. And yes, that's A. Number 12. What is the probability of drawing a red jack in one draw? Okay, how many red jacks do we have? We have, let's see, red jacks right here, two. So that would be two out of 52 in one drawing, okay? Two out of 52, push enter, math, enter, enter, one out of 26, B. Number 13, what is the probability of drawing a non-pitcher diamond card in one draw. Okay, let's go back up, change our color. Okay, let's go back up. Let's see. Non-pitcher diamond in one draw. Here's our diamond. It's our non-pitcher. So that's three out of 52. Let's see here. Three divided by 52 cards. Enter. Math. Enter, enter, 3 out of 52. Well, it doesn't reduce, obviously. Okay, let's go back up and look at the decimal situation. That is almost equal to 0 0.05, and let's round to 8. Okay. 14. An experiment requires drawing one card at a time from an average deck of 52 playing cards. If the cards are drawn with replacement, what is the probability of drawing an ace and then a black pitcher card? Well, there are four aces in any deck. Black pitcher cards, there are six. We know we're multiplying because of this word and. So let's just go ahead and type that in. 
our calculator as as we should as is open parentheses we start out with 4 divided by 52 close parentheses now we're replacing so we have the same denominator again so 6 okay we need to open our parentheses again and 6 divided by 52 close our parentheses enter we get a pretty serious decimal we need a fraction math enter enter yes three out of three hundred and sixty eight will be our answer number 15 using the average or using an average deck of playing cards we will draw two cards one at a time if the cards are drawn without replacement I'm going to underline that. That's important. What is the probability that the first card is red and the second card is a black pen? Okay, we will be multiplying. We have a red one first. Okay. How many red cards are there in a deck? Well, that's going to be 26. Each suit, the heart and the diamonds, there's 13 in each, so that's 26. So let's set this up. We have 26 and 52 cards. Possibilities. Multiplying. This is where it gets tricky or changes. We have a black 10. There's two black 10s. We no longer have 52 cards or 52 possibilities. We are not replacing the first card. So now we have 51 in our deck. Let's put that on our calculator. Parentheses, 26 divided by 52. Close up parentheses, open more parentheses. 2 divided by 51. Parentheses, enter. Okay, we need a fraction. Math, enter, enter. Oh, 1 out of 51. Make note of this guy right here that's wrong. That's kind of a distraction. And this one right here, you might be tempted to choose that one. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Number 16. Bag of jelly beans has eight yellow, six red, four black, and seven green jelly beans. If you eat two jelly beans one at a time, what is the probability of eating a red jelly bean followed by a green jelly bean? Okay, first, you're eating the jelly beans. That implies that we're not going to replace, replace our or jelly bean. I hope you don't replace your jelly bean. Okay, we're going to eat two of them. So we have the first one. Okay, and the fact that we're eating one, not replacing it, pulling out another one, means that we're going to multiply, and this is a dependent situation. We have two dependent events. Okay, first event. We need to add up our jelly beans first. Let's see, 6, 10, 8, and 7 is a total of 25 jelly beans. Okay, and the first one we're going to eat is going to be red. There's our red. 6. Okay, we have 6. And we're going to eat a jelly bean. So... Our total outcomes changes to 24 because you ate it. And then we're going to look at eating a green one first. That's 7. Okay. Let's put that in our calculator just exactly the way we wrote it. Okay. That's 6 divided by 25. Close parentheses. Open parentheses. 7 divided by. 24, 
close parentheses, enter. Oh, that's a very nice decimal. And I can already see what that is. Well, obviously I can see what it isn't also. It isn't D. It obviously doesn't match B. Highly unlikely it matches A, but it's gonna be simple to push math. Enter, enter, and it is C. Not difficult, that was nice. Let's go to number 17. The probability of raining today is 24%. If the probability of it raining today and tomorrow is 15%, what is the probability of rain tomorrow, assuming that the events are dependent? That is very important because what they're saying is that we're going to multiply today and tomorrow. So we can set this up. Okay, we know what today is. That's 24%. So we have today, 24 times tomorrow. We don't know what tomorrow is. So we have to write an X. Then both days together, they've given it to us. That's 15%. This is actually just solving for X. So we know that X equals 15.15 over the 0.24. Let's put that in our calculator. That's not bad. 0.15 divided by 0.24. Let's enter. Oh, we get a precise decimal answer. There we go. It is D. Number 18. The probability that John will work today is 85%. If the probability that he will work today and finish all his work is 68%, what is the probability that he will finish all his work given that he goes to work today? These events, just like the last question, they're dependent, they're tied together, and a hint is the word and. So we have two events, that he goes to work and he finishes all his work. So for today, the first event, that's 85%. And we know that that's going to be multiplied because our clue, the word and. And the unknown event or value is finishing all his work today. And both events multiplied together are the 0.68. Again, we just need to solve for x. So that's 0.68 divided by decimal point eight five enter that quickly into our calculator point six eight divided by point eight five press enter we're getting an exact decimal and they're asking for a decimal answer so a is what we're looking for this will be the last question in our videos Thank you for watching, and I hope that you check out our references at the end of the video. And also, please join us for the next series, or rather part three, for our Competency 16. Thank you again.